So what's Not TV really all about? It's community, community television, broadcasting. It's meant to bring creators and people together to have conversations, to share our media creations instead of just individual influencers and creators. Sometimes I just think I'm out to lunch. <laughs> I'm, I've lost it. What am I thinking? This is all old school concepts and it doesn't matter anymore because the internet, if you, if you look at pop culture now on the internet, people are doing a great job with the reaction videos. So it's at a turning point, not TV's at a turning point. I've been at this for, for a couple of years, wanting to create this thing that's in my head and needing to let that go entirely for my own sanity and my own health, and then realizing it may or may not even have a place in the world, and seeing that there is a community around it, but getting a sense that the stories right now are very polarized. And there's this spiritual journey that we're all on too, to come back to a moral understanding of the world with shared values. So those are the conversations I think are necessary to have listening to podcasts and creating content for future generations and also just to break down news stories and understand the world around us. And there's lots of people out creating content these days. Everybody's got a phone. So it's a much safer place, <laughs> ironically. You can have like a police state that surveils everyone or we just all do it ourselves with our phones. All right, wild. Anyway. The current mission the current mission is to save the children. And I've seen some news articles online that relates the Sound of Freedom movie to QAnon, which is a little bit twisted, actually, because it has nothing to do with QAnon. It's based on a true story of a, what's that called in the US? The, um, Homeland, Department of Homeland Security, I think it is. And the guy who ended up leaving his job to go and save a child on his own time. And then the greater story of Operation Underground Railroad, which that has turned into and spawned. And then the conversations that are happening around the world as a result and how it's the number one movie last weekend at the box office, surpassing the Disney movie, the new Indiana Jones movie, which ironically did, so when the producers of The Sound of Freedom ended up producing it with 20th Century Fox, Disney bought 20th Century Fox, ended up holding back its release, giving up their rights to the film, and then Angel Studios picked up the rights to the film and then did an independent release on the same weekend that Disney came out with a different movie and it ended up making more money independently than the Hollywood release of Indiana Jones. And then you get several newspapers and articles online that try to just focus on some relationship between the film or people who were participating in making the film and QAnon, which means the conversation that they're having doesn't even touch on the themes of the film and what the film's really all about. So why is it so popular? Why did so many people go and see it? And why are these, these articles being published to smear the reputation of the film? I almost dissuade people from seeing it as if if you were to go see it, then you're connected to some 
conspiracy theory, quote unquote. And I was just talking to a friend about conspiracy theories and it's like the best way to navigate the world going forward because there's such a mix of information, like there's truth mixed amongst the lies on any side of the spectrum, which creates these heated debates and, and uh, conversations that end up going nowhere. So we end up not moving forward in a constructive way and continuing to have problems in our world and then just infighting. And that's not a productive way to live. That's not going to solve any problems for the future. So in talking to our a friend, right, Mike and I were talking about, uh, let's stop talking about conspiracy theories. I think Morgan Freeman said it. How do you end racism? You stop talking about it. And if people want to get all up in arms about that, like, well, nah, you're being insensitive. Well, they're still talking about it. Like there's bigger issues and there's bigger things to, to face. We can find the facts just by, let's look at the, the issues one at a time that need addressing and prioritize them and move forward as a world, not as independent nations. Like you go and focus on this and you go and focus on that. I think that's important. Like in our communities, you know, you've got things that need to be taken care of, like whether it's uh, paving the streets or plumbing or, you know, the electrical grid. Um, and you can get into schools and all of that, but our basic infrastructure is important first of all, just so that we, we can actually survive, get clean, fresh drinking water and have sewage and be able to move around. So in your community, make sure that that's all taken care of and then we can build up from there, right? Then we can get into healthcare, then we can get into education. And some people might argue, well, healthcare has got to come first. And it's like, does it? It's, you've got a, a lot of healthy people and if the roads are all broken and you can't get fresh water, then the lack of fresh water is gonna create health problems and the lack of road infrastructure is gonna make it very difficult to get people to a doctor's office or a hospital. So like, let's just do what we can. We're not in an emergency state, so let's do what we can to build a, a good solid foundation and then we can start moving forward. So communities can take care of themselves and then we can look at global problems collectively. And if we tackle them collectively, then we can actually make progress one at a time. Let's start with the children. And then let's look at the environment, right? That's the order of priority that I feel because if we don't look after ourselves and each other and the children, then much larger problems are going to emanate from that. And this is a big one. This is a, this is a really big one. This is one that's going to take a lot of processing, emotional processing, mental processing, and compassion, compassionate understanding. It's not gonna be an overnight matter. It's not just gonna go by the wayside. It's not just some buzz word. Um, uh, what's the word for that? It's not just, you know, some, the, the thing of the week. This is taking a stand at this point in time of what do you stand for? It's been brought to the light. It's no longer swept under the rug. And now we're all invited to have a conversation. Are you going to be part of the conversation? Or are you going to ignore it? And if you ignore it, for how long? As more and more people start talking about it. And I don't mean we have to talk about it every second of every day. But collectively, we can make this our primary mission. Not another day needs to go by where these children are being kidnapped and tortured and killed. That's it. That's it for now. I used to get really hung up making these videos that I had to appear a certain way or the background has to be good or the audio or I can't see the camera. It's gonna be a lot of focus. I need to do it with somebody else. It's not good enough. Maybe the message is gonna cause some sort of arguments. Maybe it's too long, maybe it's too short. It wasn't scripted. 
how am I going to edit it? Where do I put it? What do I do with it? Who's even going to watch it? And then I chip away at it, and then a lot of times I wouldn't even look at what I was recording. And just move on to the next thing. But I kept feeling this pull and this need and then anxiety of like, is it even recording? I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking to nothing right now. Get up and check. Break the mood. So I'm coming back to it. It's just about the practice. It's just about the being present and doing it. Because yeah, I don't know. I didn't start thinking, oh, maybe it's not recording. Uh oh, <laughs> you know what I could do? I could put a little mirror behind the camera and then I can see, I think that would be really good. Then I could see the screen. I can get a better little tripod too. It's a little bit more heavy duty, but that one's good. I took that one up to Haida Gwaii. That's a whole other story that didn't get released that needs to be talked about. The trees on the island up in Haida Gwaii and on Vancouver Island. Like the industry, mining, um, how things work. We need to look at all of this and we need to do some real investigative journalism. Not the Project Veritas style, although that has its purpose and its place. I'm thinking like detective work, like going and getting some answers, looking at the world as it actually is and talking about it. And now feels like the time. And now feels like the time that we can do this together through a new platform, not TV. It's like TV, but it's not TV. It's kind of like a bridge between analog and digital too. For those of you that remember television, local television, <laughs> it's uh, community oriented. It's like your local radio station and the internet's changed all of that. But I really have felt that not TV can bridge that old into the new and bring back the traditions and the principles and the heart of broadcasting, community broadcasting in a new way that creates a new culture. Instead of these copycats, like what Facebook just copied Twitter. Um, we need a new idea. We need a new idea that can bring us together. And I want you guys to help and support it and be part of it and guide it and share your ideas and your visions for it so that we can all do it together because that's what it's all about. So here I am in front of Cal Kalamalka Lake in Vernon, British Columbia, one of the top 10 lakes according to National Geographic in the world. Very, very, very grateful to get to be sitting here right now on this July evening, 2023. Getting to talk to a camera that I don't even know if it's recording. With a microphone that I don't even know if it's working. <laughs> Am I still just a crazy person in my head with a vision of what I think I can create? Or is it uh, a real potentiality and it's possible and we can build this together? Time will tell. All right.